Hey everyone, it's Nick from Share Dividend here. In today's video, we're going to be discussing why we use adjusted earnings in all of our analysis and why you should too. But before we dive into the difference between adjusted earnings and reported earnings, I'm going to use a quick example to show you why this is so important. The company we'll be looking at is Altria, the cigarette maker. They trade on the New York Stock Exchange with the ticker MO. If you pull up a Google Finance quote for Altria, you'll notice that they're trading at a dramatically low price to earnings ratio of about 9. And you can see that here. Now for context, the S&P 500 is trading at a price to earnings ratio of about 25 right now, and Altria is one of the most high quality businesses around. So you would think that they would trade at an earnings multiple at least as high as the S&P 500. Now the reason why Altria's price to earnings ratio is so low has to do with the difference between adjusted earnings and reported earnings. The differences between reported earnings and adjusted earnings are summarized in the screen that you see now. Reported earnings shows all revenue and expenses incurred by the business in the reporting period. And they're sometimes called GAAP earnings because they adhere to generally accepted accounting principles, or GAAP for short. Adjusted earnings are different. They exclude all accounting items that are likely to not be repeated by the business, including things like asset sales, one-time tax payments, fines, or lawsuits. The big conceptual difference here is that adjusted earnings give you a sense of the business's future earnings power. Adjusted earnings are repeatable, while sometimes reported earnings are not. So how does this relate back to our example of Altria? Well, if you think about the mathematical formula for the price to earnings ratio, earnings are in the denominator. So an artificially low price to earnings ratio can usually be explained because a number that's too big is being used for earnings. And that's exactly the case with Altria. If you navigate to the company's investor relations website, you'll see that they provide a reconciliation between adjusted earnings and reported earnings. In that reconciliation, which you can see here, Altria reported a significant $4.61 accounting charge related to the sale of an investment that they had in AB InBev and Sab Miller. Now, think about that for a moment. The company's adjusted earnings were only $3.03 .03 per share, yet their reported earnings were $7.28 per share, almost entirely due to that one-time investment gain. Google Finance uses the reported number, which explains why their price-to-earnings ratio for Altria is so low. This is dangerous because on paper, Altria looks like a fantastic investment if you rely on Google Finance's price to earnings ratio. In reality though, if you use the company's adjusted earnings numbers, it is actually a little bit overvalued and we would not recommend buying it right now. There are really three main lessons that you should take away from this video. The first is the difference between adjusted earnings and reported earnings. Adjusted earnings exclude non-recurring accounting items that impact earnings in some way. Adjusted earnings give a far more accurate depiction of the company's future earnings power, and that's why we use them in all of our analysis. The second is that Google Finance and many other stock screeners, especially the free ones, they tend to use reported earnings. And on the surface, it might not be clear why that's so bad, but as we saw in this video, that can be extremely dangerous. Reported earnings can sometimes be higher than adjusted earnings, and that can lead you to buy overvalued stocks on the assumption that they're actually undervalued which is a very dangerous investment strategy. The third thing, which I've already said actually, is that adjusted earnings are much preferable, and we recommend using them wherever possible. Many large publicly traded companies will issue both reported and adjusted earnings, so you don't actually have to make the adjustments yourself. And in those cases, the company's stated adjusted earnings are usually the best earnings to use for the valuation of these securities.